yet another example for class 14. This is out of the Sengel textbook, and this is problem 651, at least in this edition. And we have a Pelton wheel turbine um, that's uh, used in a hydraulic hydroelectric power plant. And uh, this turbine has a high uh, speed jet with velocity BJ. And these buckets um, uh, have like uh, this sort of like uh, uh, re re reaction uh, uh, blades um, that you could think of right here. Um, are they calling them, they're just calling them buckets, right? And they have an angle, and they're using the, the angle beta here, um, referencing from that uh, uh, line, this line right here. I didn't want to say it's horizontal. I guess it is horizontal. Um, but, you know, we're looking in this view over here on the right, we're looking down onto this. Uh, um, I want to call them a blade instead of a bucket. Um, now, the, the, the problem is they want to show that this, it, this is the equation for it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. Let's just go and try to obtain the numerical values. We're not going to just plug and chug this equation, though. So we're kind of going uh, along with the idea of showing this. But we want to use what we know uh, about um, this process here. Right? So let's um, go into right here. Okay. So we have... Uh, let me start out with, um, we know that this thing is operating at 150 RPM. So 150 and times two pi radians per revolution, 60 seconds per minute, and we get ourselves 15.71 radians per second is what this thing is spinning. Um, we also get, we also told the volume flow rate, good, I'll write it down, is gonna be, uh, 10 cubic meters per second. And then we could, well, we could find the mass flow rate. It's going to be pretty easy to find. Just a density of water times this, or the 999 times our 10. We got 9,990 uh, kilograms per second. Cool. And we have a road, this, this right here is actually going to have a rotating control volume, which is you know, not, uh, I guess that we, we were kind of used to that. So here's our FBD onto the thing. And we don't need a circle. We, you know, we just have, it's just going about a shaft right here. And uh, we're going to have a momentum diagram. And I think it's going to be behoove us to kind of look also down at a view that's maybe from the, I guess it's from the top, right? So um, this thing is spinning in this direction. And I can tell you that the torque is going to be the opposite direction, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and write it in the torque is in the opposite direction. I know that the torque has to be in the opposite direction. Uh, we're going to have a velocity, a tangential velocity, right? So we've created this tangential velocity uh, that's going here. So we have m dot vt. Uh, uh, one, and then we're also going to have um, the thing coming back outwards. We're, we can't really quite tell from here, so we're going to have to look through that thing right there. And so here is the m dot v t one, but here is the outward thing coming out right there. So there's the uh, we call the m dot uh, uh, v uh, two, right? And there's two of them, right? M dot V2. It's going in both directions. I think we're okay with that. Um, so let's say we'll take the sum of the moments. It's going to be equal to the sum of the moments, sum of the RM dot VT. And this is the outlet minus the sum of the RM dot VT inlet. Uh, so we have the torque is negative because we're going to say that positive is counterclockwise. And so over here, we take the inlet and the in is actually making it go counterclockwise. Well, no, let me, let me start with the outlet. I'm sorry. Start with the outlet. So the outlet is, uh, uh, M dot, but it's going to be, um, 
It's going to be the relative velocity. Is that true? Um, I'm trying to see. We have to think our way through this. And I believe because this control volume is rotating, boy, I got to tell you, sometimes you compare from one problem to another and start to start to question yourself of whether uh, this one should be rel the jet should be relative uh, to the thing right so I'm gonna say because the blade is moving that we were gonna have to find the relative velocities on, on onto this mm hmm I hate that but, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's got to matter. It's got to matter, right? So, um, the, you know, as opposed to this previous problem here, that the velocity was entering this thing moving, right? The thing is moving, but the velocity is tangential. That's the actual velocity. And... Damn, I gotta tell you, I wanna argue with this. Let's continue with it, but I gotta tell you, I wanna put a, I, I wanna revisit, I wanna talk to some people and ask them about whether this should be, uh, this should be the relative velocity as well. I'm kind of, um, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm gonna take the relative velocity over here, which they have, they are establishing, they are establishing this must be the relative velocity because they're the V jet, minus this right here. So that's the relative velocity between the two. And it makes sense if we had like maybe a control volume that we were looking at here. This is a moving control volume, whereas this is a stationary control volume, right? Like this thing might be rotating, but uh, this, th this thing might be rotating, but as far as it entering the control volume, it is this VT. But if we're looking at this blade, this blade is moving. If that is the control volume on an individual basis, right? So uh, for one thing, it's only one spot. That's, that's kind of an important thing. So I'm going to say that each of these is a control volume, but it's going to be the relative velocity, right? So that's, that's a tough conceptual one to try to make. And one that's, you know, uh, uh, difficult as an instructor to try to uh, convince you because I personally will need to kind of argue that back and forth. It's really kind of this view right here that I have to say. So the outlet of this uh, should be, um, and because there's two of them, I'm gonna I'm not gonna split the mass flows in half. I'm just gonna keep them together. But recognize that that's gonna be R M dot. Uh, and uh, uh, we need to have the relative velocity. So it's going to be the velocity of the jet, which was given up above as 50, 50 meters per second, minus the R times the omega, right? So that's going to be the, uh, the outlet of this thing. And, and, and I guess we could actually like kind of measure what that was going to be Right. If we could put like maybe a little particle that we could trace and we could put like a little uh, high speed camera onto the thing, we could probably see that. And that's going to be times uh, the cosine of beta. And then that's the that's the outlet. Right. That's, that's these guys right there. And there's they split in half, but there's two of them. So we're just not going to do that. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have minus and. Uh, Okay, you know, I almost want to make this minus as well. Do I want to do that? Mm. No, no, I guess not. I almost kind of wanted to make this minus. Well, let's, uh, because this one is counterclockwise but it has minus right here. So I, there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things I wanna kinda of argue with on, on this particular example. Mm. 
but let's just keep going. We're going to have VJ is going to be of the jet minus the R omega. Yeah. So what we're left with in terms of the torque onto the thing, we're going to have is going to be equal to the R M dot VJ minus R omega. And we're going to have, because that negative sign is going to reverse this whole thing. And so it's going to be a, a one minus the cosine right there. All right. So that right there is quasi what they've done right up here, right? They did the mass flow is the density uh, times omega times, this is, the volume, this is the volumetric flow rate, right? So the density times a volumetric flow rate. And uh, uh, is that true? I'm trying to see right there. Yeah, density m dot is that me right there? I'm trying to, I can't tell if that's the volumetric flow rate right here. Yeah, I'm wondering where this omega is coming from. That's that's it's kind of a puzzler. What is that omega? Huh. Oh, no, they're showing a V dot right there. And that is not, is that a V dot? That looks like a V dot there. I think that omega doesn't belong. But anyway, let me, let me write out and finish with this problem. This has not been a great example. So maybe, maybe nobody will watch this. That's, that's probably a good thing. We have two meters and we had a flow rate of 9,990. And then we have the, this V uh, a jet that was given as 50. I'm sorry. And uh, we're going to subtract out that two meter radius times the omega, which was 15.71. And then multiply by one minus the cosine. And then, oh, you know what happened? Okay, one of the signs that's getting messed up right here is because I'm looking over to the left. This sign is going to be okay. Yeah, that's what it is. This beta right here is greater than like it, it's greater than one. It's greater than ninety. So because so I'm going to have a a beta of 160 degrees, and that's why I'm causing the sign problem. Yeah, okay. But I'm still less messed up with the omega up here. I still don't like that omega. I don't see the the point of it. Let's we can I can look at this solution manual here in a second. Um, let me get this, this torque right in here. And that torque ends up being 720,230 Newton meters. And now if we want the power that's out of it, we had torque times uh, angular velocity, 72230 times our 15.71. And we're we'll end up with 1.132E7 newton meters per second so we could say that the extracted power that's possible is 1.132 megawatts so let me take a second and pause the video and see what um i might have missed with that omega i don't think that omega belongs in there okay i see what happened here I didn't read this correctly. This is not the torque. This is the power. Okay, so that's why that omega is there, right? Because they they were getting for the they're writing an equation for the power, not for the torque. All right, so, whew. All right, problems uh, uh, mystery solved. So those are some of the the numbers. And uh, the sign conventions that beta right there is what was troubling me in terms of their thing right there because it does end up uh, uh, creating. A, uh, uh, a the, the signs will work out. That's, that's what we have right here, because that guy right here will also be negative, and that's going to create that thing, so they're going to be additive together. Yay, I'm done.